So it's now time to welcome on stage Ufi Ibrahim, Chief Executive of the British Hospitality Association, and Anne Pierce, the Chief Executive of Springboard UK, to tell us all about the next steps of the big hospitality conversation. Ufi Ibrahim and Anne Pierce. <laughs> experience opportunity with Marriott and then that led you into a, a job actually with Gourmet. So congratulations and uh, you know I'm really keen on you sharing with the audience because there's been a lot of question around pledges and how do you turn pledges into action and what difference does it really make to people these big hospitality conversation events. So tell us what's been the difference for you? How's it impacted your life? Wow. Um, I'm gonna get a little bit emotional here, <laughs> and I'm really sorry. You and Springboard and being given the opportunity to prove myself through the work experience that I did at Marriott, it was only two weeks, has changed my life in such a huge way. And I, I am sorry, I will share it with you, but getting this job with Goman, working in the bar like I've wanted to do for the last half a year or so, um, has helped me spiritually, mentally, physically. I've just come out of five years of depression. I'm 21, turning 22 this week. Finally feel like I've got my life back. Six months ago, I would be sitting at home doing nothing, having no dreams, aspirations, hopes, thinking that I was never gonna get out of the bubble that I was in. But just being given the chance to show that I can work, I have passion, and I can have dreams, and I can do something with my life, that opportunity has just changed me. I'm a completely different person, and I'm so grateful. I'm sorry, but I'm so grateful to Springboard. I'm so grateful to Marriott, and I'm so grateful to Goman, because if you knew the struggle that I've been through and who I am now, purely just because I was given the chance to prove myself, my job means so much to me. I've made new friends, I've learned new skills. I meet people every day, you know, I talk to tourists every day and I have my life back and now I have choices. You know, I, I can take my job somewhere, you know, I can do something with my life. I didn't have that before. So.
Liam, um, that's a really moving story. And congratulations. And I'm sure you're going on to some real success within the industry in your career. So very well done. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'd also like to introduce you to another um, person who benefited from the big conversation. This is Phil Jenkinson sat next to me. I first um, met Phil last year when he, um, like Emily, was um, involved in the Hotel GB programme. And uh, following that programme, um, Phil got offered a position at the um, Thistle, Marble Arch, and um, Springboard continued to provide him with support and mentoring during that process. But Phil, perhaps you'd like to tell the audience in a similar way the impact that then getting involved in the big conversation had on your career and how it's developing. I was, uh, well, working at Thistle Marble Arts, I was, uh, I was a breakfast chef and my job, it was very customer fo uh, focused and I was starting to realise that I was enjoying talking to the customers more than making food for them. <laughs> and at this time, and uh, at this time, I was, uh, basically I was invited to the British Hospitality Conversation and here I met a few, well, quite a lot of Whitbread's employees and they all had good stories about how the company had helped them grow and all these different courses that they'd been sent on. And this kind of made me realize that I think Premier Inn would be the right employer for me. And, sorry, just flicking my notes. Uh, and basically, I told my springboard advisor about wanting to change to a customer-focused role. And she, there, she then introduced me to the cluster manager of, of the London Premier Inns, which is Bruce Tennant. And had a little, I had a little chat with him. That seemed to go very well. I was sent to Waterloo for a, a, a secondary interview, which, well, that goes well because I've, I, I have the job now. I'm, I'm a food and beverage team member, and some days I'm waitering, some days I'm behind the bar, some days I'm in the kitchen. So it's good. Not, not, not two days are the same. It's always something different. It's always different. It's always challenging, and. Yeah, and I'm confident that Premier Inn are going to help me get to the level that I want to be in, in my career. And basically, I would like to thank Springboard very much for, for the opportunity to get me that job and also to be sitting on this stage today. If it wasn't for Springboard, I wouldn't be here. Thanks, Phil. And I, I, I have to um, point out that this young lad is the cover photo of Catering Hotel Keeper, I think, this week. Uh, it's heavily photoshopped. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm handing back to you now, if you mind. Well, I think, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we all let Leanne and you go so that you can actually progress your futures even further. Just to ask the audience um, to give you one more round of applause with, applause with huge, great wishes for your future in the industry. Fantastic careers. You've been an inspiration to everyone in this room, I have no doubt. And we'd like to thank you for choosing hospitality as a career and wish you every success. Thank you. So this is our wrap-up. As I said, our wrap-up is actually slightly different because this is really about day one and looking forward to day two. But just before we do that, I think it's important to put things into context. And, you know, we've been very fortunate, I think, Anne and I, because we've been uh, inspired by, by Patrick and we owe Patrick huge thanks because, you know, what Patrick has done is he's, he's actually stepped forward and really helped to enact um, a community within a community. Um, he's really helped to inspire many of his peers and colleagues, and that's had a ripple effect. And now we've had over 700 chief executives of our industry who have engaged in the, in the um, big conversation, and we've only been doing this for less than a year. <laughs> um, it's been a remarkable journey. We've achieved 10 events together. I don't know how many people you've touched through that process. You'll have to tell us in a moment how many young people you've helped to engage through that process. And this is just day one. And, and you know, you've done a lot of insight. Springboard has a lot of insight into the importance of tackling the misperceptions, actually, of many young people about our industry. 
Can you just share some of those insights with the audience? Yes, of course. Um, last year, we published some research that we'd done with uh, young people in schools who were just about to, to leave schools. We did this in collaboration with People First. And what we were doing was looking at young people's perceptions to the industry as a career and the factors that influence their career choices. And some of the findings, I think, are fascinating. You know, 82% um, of young people of school leaving age, you're really bored of hearing that statistic, don't know what they want to do when they leave school. Yet, 53%, so well over half, would positively consider hospitality. And when you compare that to the research that we last did in 2005, that's almost double. So, you know, what we wanted to try and understand was how we can actually convert them into being employees within our, with our industry. How can we excite them? So we looked uh, in a little bit more detail about the factors that influence career choice. And we found, naturally, that young people are looking all over the place for careers information. They're looking on the internet, they're looking in social media, they're looking on television and radio and all of that. But the things that make the real difference are those that give them um, that real exper experiential learning about careers in the industry. Some of the things that we've heard about today, so um, careers magazines, careers websites are really important. But the real important things are those where they get face-to-face -face experience, those where they get industry speakers into schools, into colleges, into universities, where we get um, schools and colleges and universities going into industry to see behind the scenes. They're really, really important. You've heard from Kieran that we've got initiatives that really do support those, the ambassador program. We have a thousand trained ambassadors in our industry that we need to mobilize and get into schools and colleges and universities. But the deal breaker is work experience. But you know, it's a two-edged sword. If you get a poor work experience, you're gonna put people off forever. But if you get a good quality, challenging work experience, you're gonna inspire them to enter the industry. And that, you know, is not a done deal. And to ensure we have consistently, um, consistent approaches to quality work experience, we've developed the quality standard Inspire. And with the support of the Hospitality Guild, we're trying to urge more and more employers to adopt that standard so that we can go out to everybody who wants work experience and say, come to our industry because you'll get the best experience. It's part of a longer term resourcing strategy and you will get really great careers at the end of it. Which is, which is um, fantastic. And just to say, I mean, this is just the start of our journey, isn't it, as, as, as day one. And there are actually the individuals in the audience whom are already stepping forward and saying that they are going to host um, more big conversation events this year. So we have Harry Murray, who I can see from um, here, um, looking intently at the scene. Um, mm -hmm. Harry has um, offered to organize a big hospitality conversation event on the 15th of October in Bath. We're doing a special big hospitality conversation specifically for restaurants on the 9th of October, which Alistair Storey has very kindly offered to host at the Science Museum here in London. And I know that Anna Dowling already approached me today and said, don't forget to come and find me at the end because I want to host um, the, the big hospitality conversation in Heathrow. And this is the ripple effect that started. So um, this is the movement that, that we've really started. And we've got um, also an offer earlier today to hold a big conversation in Manchester. Fantastic. And we're also working with a team in Cornwall to have a big con uh, hospitality conversation in Cornwall in September, October time. So this is just the start. It's really exciting. It's really exciting. Now imagine 240,000 businesses in our industry in the United Kingdom. If each business in our industry came forward and made just one pledge, just one, opportunity for a 16 to 24 year old. And we know through our experience that most of these 240,000 businesses have vacancies all the time. We could create 240,000 jobs for 16 to 24 year olds. And that plays directly into the BHA targets of 300,000 jobs. And at this rate, I think our 2020 timeline is probably going to be brought forward very, very quickly. So on that basis, I think I'd like to certainly thank all of you who have been involved for your engagement, your support, and helping to show what a difference an industry can make as a collective working in partnership. And at the same time, I would very much like to thank our partners in Prime, because Springboard are doing an outstanding job in helping these young people and making a real difference to their lives, which is just wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. You know what?
what um, the big conversation has really, I think, inspired the passion and the support of industry. And it's really enthused and motivated young people. But it's not just about improving perceptions with young people. It's not just about mobilizing the industry, the private sector, to um, offer up those employment opportunities. I think, and Ufi, you'll know better than anybody, the BHA needs to really be influencing government. It needs to be influencing the media. So I don't know, maybe you could finish off by telling us how you think the big conversation is really going to make an impact in, in those fields. Well, yes. I mean, we've heard today a lot of, well, we've heard from three ministers today, um, an improvement on last year. We had one minister last year, and we had three ministers this year, and all three actually quoted figures. So it seems that hard facts are very, very important to dispel any misperception about the importance of our industry versus any other industry. And we have all of those statistics. And we've actually managed and accomplished over the past couple of years to align around the same statistics. So now our industry are all aligned around the same facts and figures, which is actually uh, has brought us a very, very long way. Because previously, it was all very dispersed. So now we are all singing from the same hymn sheet, which is a great accomplishment. So we have the facts. But in order to have a real impact, I think that we really have to step above the mark and stop waiting for government to pay attention and stop whinging when they don't and actually stepping in and demanding that attention and doing that not only with hard facts but real action as well. And that's what's really special about this particular initiative, about the big hospitality conversation. Because through this initiative, we are demonstrating the fact that we are creating jobs. We are touching people's lives. You've heard from, uh, from some of the young people whose lives we've touched. And we're actually listening to young people. And we are learning a lot about communication and also learning a lot about the fact that actually, if we were smart, we could harness 2.7 million voices in our industry to be actively championing and campaigning for our industry and our success. But to do that, we have to inspire them. We have to inspire those people. We have to inspire ourselves. And that's really another very special element of this campaign. So we hope that by inspiring the next generation and the future, we're actually inspiring all of you and that each one of you will feel compelled now with that inspiration to make a difference yourselves. And to make that difference, I urge you to contact Anne, to support Springboard, and clearly I would urge you to contact us and to actually support us and to be part of a collective journey where we will completely change the future for our industry and as I said, this is day one. So please join us and be part of that journey and make a difference. And you will be greatly rewarded by doing so. So please join us.